okay if you're following the instructions online and you plan to use bolts to bolt the driving dog to your hub you'll find that the bolts just don't seem to work there's just no clearance the instructions online appear to refer to a slash six or the slash seven hub which must have the room for the bolts the slash five hub does not as you can see the quarter inch bolts just will not fit down in the depressions and there's really no way to to make room for them. You can use a Dremel but honestly you'd have to remove too much aluminum and then you'd, you'd also have to Dremel out a space for a socket to make it even worthwhile and there's just no room on this slash five hub. No clearance for the close tolerance aircraft bolts but the only bolts you can use are these cap head bolts. Cap heads have very small heads, maybe a millimeter there, overhang, and and they're just, you can see they'll fit easily. They're designed to fit in close tolerance spaces or spaces where you, they don't need much room. But the problem with the cap head bolts as well is the clearance on the other side, and I'll, I'll show you what the problem is with the bolt method next. Okay, the problem with the bolt method on the slash 5, uh, it appears there's just not enough clearance between the final drive and the driving dog. Even using the bolts and these close tolerance aircraft nuts, uh, once bolted on, the basically the nut heads were hitting the final drive on the slash 5. They just weren't, weren't feasible to use. And you can use I found these very shallow nuts locally and I used those and using the cap head screws and the very shallow nuts you can get it to work. Um, they, they did leave enough room for the final drive but honestly I just I decided not to go this route. Basically these very shallow nuts you can see are they're very shallow and they you've got maybe two screws of the bolt in there and it's they're very weak honestly I stripped out a couple of these just trying to tighten them down and even when they're finished you've got so little clearance between the the nut head and the final drive it's just to me it just it was it's weak and it's kind of dangerous and I just I just did not like to use this so basically the slash five the bolt method does not appear to work. Okay, the solution I found was to use these specialty aircraft fasteners. They're called high locks, and they don't really call them bolt and nuts. These are high lock pins and collars, and they they come in all all types of metal, um, steel. You can get these in titanium, different head types. You can even get them countersuck heads, or this is like a protruding shear type head. But these fasteners are basically designed to combine the features of rivets and bolts. They're used in the aircraft industry to replace rivets. The high lock pins and collars are very easy to install. I can't take credit for this idea. I came across these high lock fasteners on a forum. I think it was Adventure Rider. I can't remember the name of the person who mentioned the possibility of using these this high lock fastening system on the to bolt the driving dogs on the slash five, six, seven hubs. Whoever it was, I owe them a case of beer though, because this this worked out great. And I'll show you. I've got one installed here. You can see there's so many options with these high locks. You can like I mentioned, you can have different head sizes, different shaft, unthreaded shaft sizes and even different thread sizes so you want to make sure you get the correct pin that matches the correct collar here and this collar is an option with a smaller head uh, there's a standard collar and they're color coded as well uh, there's a red collar which has a larger size bolt which I don't think would work well I know it would not work with a slash 5 hub. These blue collars are designed for 
close tolerances where you, you you need a lot of room. And also, as you can see, they come with a aluminum aluminum washer kind of wrapped around, and they fit in here perfectly. I mean, you, you couldn't get a better, closer fit. Anyway, I'll show you how to bolt these on next. It's very easy, and it it seems to work great. Okay, these Hylock pins that I used, these are the protruding tension head pins, and these are the largest head sizes they have in the Hylock fastening system, I believe. And even with this, this head, there's plenty of room between the, the pin and the final drive for the slash five. But because it does have a protruding head, you do have to grind down one side because of the shape of the driving dog it's not completely flat and it's the same with a bolt or nut as well any fastener you put here you're gonna have to grind it down to meet this basically this angle on the driving dog so I grind down one side to make sure it fits flush and flat against the housing of the driving dog now, these Hylock pins are close tolerance I measured these with my caliper and they had the almost the exact same diameter as the close tolerance air, aircraft bolts I was going to use. Okay, one thing I did that helped me out, since you have to grind away part of the protruding head that sits against the inside of the driving dog, and these are these pins are put on from the other side. Um, basically, I just marked where the ground down side was because as you tighten them down they want to they want to spin and you don't want that to happen because it will if you spin the head it'll lift off the driving dog slightly and you'll you'll think you're you've tightened it down and it's on good and it's not so I basically just mark it so I know exactly I won't let it spin on me special highlock tools for doing this but as you can see you can do it with hand tools. I think it's a 3 16th Allen head and this particular pin uses a 5 16th box end wrench. Okay you don't need to use a torque wrench on the highlock collars. They're designed to break off at a specific torque and it's it's a, it's both a good and a bad thing. It's good because you don't need a torque wrench, and you know you've got a perfect torque on every one of the collars all the way around. It's bad because you want to get this right the first time. There's a special tool for breaking these collars off, but it's expensive and it's not something you would have at home. So make sure you get this right the first time, and I hope to never have to remove these. Okay, all finished. That um, looks good. This will be covered, eventually covered with a hubcap, but even if, even if it's not, it actually looks good with the blue anodized aluminum collars. Okay, I'll finish. This is the driving dog side. You can see where I marked the high lock pins to make sure the side I ground was against the, the curved side of the driving dog. To keep it from, so that way I know it didn't spin as I was tightening it down from the other side. Uh, these pins, I'll leave the exact part numbers of the pins and the collars that I used in the description of this video. These worked. As you can see, these work great. I'm pretty sure this is going to work perfectly. I don't have this this R75 back together yet. This is a restoration project. It'll probably be a couple more months before I even get this bike on the road. But I'm positive with these steel high lock pins and the collars. This is going to work perfectly. 
I'll try to update the description of this video when I get this bike on the road, get a couple hundred miles on it, and let you know how it goes. Just a tip, these high lock specialty aircraft fasteners are, they can be really expensive if purchased through, say, aircraft supply places. Uh, my suggestion is to look on eBay. There are several people that sell these pins and collars on eBay for much, much cheaper. I actually got the collars on eBay, the pins I had to order from an aircraft supply place. and I, pay, I paid almost 30 bucks just for the pins. I paid close to, I think, 20 for the collars. So 50 bucks plus the 113 driving dog here. I'm into this for 160 bucks, which is still way below the 300 a machine shop would charge. But again, look on eBay. Uh, a lot of these collars might be, a lot of these pins might be used on eBay. The pins can be reused. They're basically specialty bolts. As you can see, the collars cannot be reused. They break off. So the collars might be the more expensive part, but I got lucky and found these collars on eBay for a very good price. Again, I'll leave links, part numbers, other information in the description of this video, the steps, tools necessary, and I hope this information in this video helps somebody out there. It took me a while to figure this out, but thanks to a lot of information on the internet, uh, the guy in the forums that even mentioned the high lock pins and just a lot of reading and research. I think, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work great. I uh, hope somebody else has some use for this video and good luck.